Web design is the process of designing the visual look and feel of a website. As a web designer, you focus on planning the user experience of the website, wireframe layouts, organize content and images in a way that tells a story, and design the final UI. Your homepage is your first impression to the world, so it's essential to design it well. Design can be subjective, but there are some things to keep in mind to design an effective and well-designed website. In this video, we'll dive into eight tips to help you design a website that converts and achieves your client's goal. Tip one is to design for mobile first. Mobile first design is a design philosophy that aims to create better experiences for users by starting the design process from the smallest of screens. Designing and prototyping your websites for mobile devices first helps you ensure that your user's experience is seamless on any device screen. Rather than designing the UI layout for a desktop website experience, design and prototype how it will look on mobile first. Then move on to the larger screen versions next, like tablet and desktop. Mobile design is much more limited. You're designing for a smaller screen and can only fit so many elements on one page. By designing for mobile first, you have to choose only what's absolutely necessary for your users and leave out all the rest. As you expand and adapt the design for larger screens, you can choose to provide more information, but you know exactly what you need to include first. Tip two is to use a grid to solve organization. Grids help you organize the content of the web page. Without one, elements are randomly placed, misaligned, and it becomes more difficult for the user to navigate through the website. If you're stuck on how to get started with using a grid, a good place to start is a 12 column or 960 grid system. The 960 grid system is an effort to streamline a web development workflow by providing commonly used dimensions based on a width of 960 pixels. There are two variations, 12 and 16 columns. The 960 grid follows the following structure. The total width is 960 pixels, Use 12 columns maximum, 60 pixels each wide. Use 10 pixels of spacing to the left and right of each column for a total gutter spacing of 20 pixels. Total content area is 940 pixels. The 12 column grid system allows for plenty of flexibility. Here's an example of how you can use the 12 column grid to add content in a three column layout. Tip three, balancing negative space. Negative space, also known as white space, is a learned skill in design. New designers might be intimidated by the blank page, but design isn't about filling space with as much information and graphics as possible. Instead, use typography, images, and negative space with purpose to direct a user's attention and create a seamless experience. Take a look at these examples for how a negative and positive space can be used together to shift the focus of a design. There's no right or wrong answer, but depending on the goal of your design, you may want to lean toward more or less negative space. Tip four, legibility is king. Readability and legibility are often interchangeable terms, but they're actually quite different. Readability is the arrangement of fonts and words in order to make written content flow in an easy to read way. Legibility, on the other hand, refers to how easily distinguishable the letters are from one another in a font. After all, if no one can read what's on your website, then what purpose is it serving? Take a look at these examples of a good versus bad legibility for a sample body copy paragraph. You'll notice the example on the left is really hard to read. This is due to the tight letting and tracking. It's in all caps and bold. All of this together makes it really hard to read. Whereas the example on the right is an example of good legibility. The letting and tracking are balanced and it's set to upper and lower case. Use high quality images. Avoid blurry and pixelated images by designing your graphics at the right size and scaling your images appropriately. Use whole pixel numbers only. Instead of using an image sized at 600.5 by 800.1 pixels, resize it to 600 by 800 pixels. You might not think it would make a difference, but trust me, this is a bit of feedback I've gotten from so many developers I've worked with. Clear hierarchy. Hierarchy is how you show the importance of specific elements on a page of a website. Through design elements like scale, color, contrast, alignment, repetition, and space, 
you can achieve a clear hierarchy and help direct the user to one outcome. Whether it's the headline or a call to action, decide what's most important for the user to see first, then use design to solve the problem. Take a look at these examples. Which one do you think has a better hierarchy and why? In the first example, all the text is the same size, color, and weight. When everything is the same, nothing stands out, and it's easy to skim past information. In the second example, there's a clear hierarchy. You notice the headline first because it's the largest and displayed in a bold weight. Next, you notice the CTA because the white text is all caps and reversed out on a pink button. Using a combination of scale and weight helps direct the user to the most important information, to read the headline first and then take action by clicking on the button. Clear call to actions, or CTAs. When it comes to designing for the web, it's important to have a clear path to one call to action. Many times a client will ask you to include more buttons, make them bigger, make them red, or just make them stand out more. It's up to you as the designer to make these decisions. Use your design skills to organize the content of a website in an effective way. Good design is simple. When in doubt, lean toward less. Tip number eight, don't overwhelm or confuse the user. Avoid overwhelming your user by cutting all distractions from your design. You'll be able to achieve this if you followed the above tips for good web design practices, but it's also a good reminder. If a client asks you to add or make changes to a website, ask why. Does it add value to the experience? If not, it's probably not necessary to include. The Google homepage is one of the best examples of minimal web design with a clear call to action. There's distinct brand recognition with the large Google logo, a long search bar, and just two buttons. There are no other distractions. Now that you have a better idea of some best practices for designing an effective website that converts, which will you focus on first? Web design is an iterative process. Nothing is permanent. It's an ever-evolving field. Take note of these best practices, test, learn, and repeat. Through trial and error, you'll learn how to create beautiful website experiences that achieve a business goal and delight your user's experience. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also leave a comment down below. What was something new that you learned? Which tip will you start implementing first? And while you're at it, click on one of these videos or one of them mentioned in the description below to watch next.